Welcome back. So the title of this mini lecture is Women in American Life During the First World War. Let's get into it. First off, I think it's really, really critical with any discussion of the many roles and many forms of labor that women were actively engaged in across American life during that particular period, that it's important to be mindful of the many, many intersections of things like race and class and how those factored in to what we understand about gendered and sexualized experiences that would have occurred during those particular times. Yes, does the war time era provide some additional opportunities for some women dependent on things like race and or class to be involved in activities that they might not have been able to be involved in independent of wartime America? Yes. However, again, those contextual realities matter. And it is important for us when we're speaking broadly about these kinds of experiences to be mindful of that as we go through an understanding of things. So, the U.S. military during the First World War is going to be largely a gendered and segregated force with very few opportunities for women. There will be some opportunities in the Navy and in a few other elements, but largely when we're talking about opportunities for women to be actively involved in the process of wartime American life, much of that will be either on the home front or in some cases absolutely deploying to France in a number of capacities, in some cases with the military and as soldiers, as veterans. Uh, but again, this is going to be limited. In terms of deploying, uh, a good example of this, of course, would be the, the Hello Girls, uh, so the many women who served as telephone operators, as switchboard operators, uh, with the U.S. military at that particular point in time. Uh, now, women were selected uh, directly for this particular role for a number of reasons, uh, but sadly, during that particular point in time, uh, their, their status was considered somewhat you know, the, the, the gender bias of, of that particular era, of course, placed a number of, of, of undue burdens uh, and unacceptable bigotry that those women had to face uh, so that after the war was over, they were denied veteran status. Uh, but they had a critical role to play in the logistical nature of the American Expeditionary Force communicating effectively in 1918. Uh, so the role they played was critical, but sadly they were denied veteran status after the war. Uh, another example, of course, uh, is going to be uh, in terms of factories, in terms of things on the home front, but in terms of deploying, uh, we'd be looking at things like uh, women who are going to be actively participating with um, organizations certainly like either the Red Cross or certainly the YWCA uh, and some of these other organizations. Uh, now, these kinds of organizations had been actively involved uh, in efforts in France, particularly the Red Cross before this, uh, and we we're going to have roles to play there. Uh, and also, on the home front especially, uh, the federal government is going to play a very active role uh, in attempting to mobilize women across uh, racial and class boundaries uh, for uh, efforts to be able to uh, produce for the war um, in terms of food production and uh, work production uh, in, in factories uh, and this kind of thing. And much of that uh, is going to be run uh, and overseen by the councils of national defense, which existed kind of at the state level and then eventually at the county level uh, really across the United States. Now, again, much of that's going to be gendered, much of that is going to be segregated, much of that is going to be sexualized in, in, in certain ways, uh, but this is going to involve labor that women are going to be actively participating in, really, again, across all levels of American life. Uh, so, 
Uh, we have women who are uh, a part of the military uh, and are going to be a part of this process. Uh, but we also have a very gendered and biased focus on the part of uh, the Wilson administration at that time, uh, which is also um, very combative to the efforts for suffrage uh, that women are actively lobbying for at that time as well. Uh, and so while there might be you know, sort of theoretically progressive gains essentially that are being made, there are also, you know, clear difficulties and bigotry and discrimination uh, that many women are going to face at this particular time. Thank you.